Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a Storyteller Spotlight. Um, I'm gonna do updates really quick first, but we're gonna look at um, a little John Buscema Wolverine. Uh, I was trying to think of something uh, fun to come back with and uh, I was looking at my bookshelves, what's in my office right now, and uh, I saw this and I was like, you know what, that would actually be pretty cool. And there's a lot that you can learn from this and I'll explain why in a second. So anyway, quick updates. I just finished a deadline. so. Uh, some of the radio silence, quote unquote, on um, <laughs> YouTube was just, I was really, really busy. The, um, the Iron Maiden book that I'm working on um, was, well, it still is, but the first two issues were really under the gun. So finished issue one, issue two was like, just you hit the ground running on it. And uh, three is supposedly uh, going to be in the same situation, but I just finished two uh, yesterday, so... I'm doing the moonwalk in celebration. Um, and then uh, make sure you're following me on Instagram because I started uploading Blaster Kid related art. Um, it's a side story, not really a side story. It's its own book called Denizen. So Denizen is told from a different point of view uh, in a different part of the world um, that Blaster Kid exists in. Um, but they're, they're kind of two, well, not kind of, they're two simultaneously um, happening events, and you get to see it from both sides of it. So it's really exciting, and, and it gives me an opportunity to um, do two completely different styles. So Blaster Kid will be more in sort of like the style that I think people are more familiar with for me, which would be uh, more fine line, um, pretty graphic, and, uh, you know, what, what you've kind of seen me do before. And then um, the... Uh, Denizen work is uh, a lot more um, kind of chaotic, and, and I have all these different styles in me, and so uh, I figured why restrict them, and uh, if I'm doing my own thing, then I have to remind myself I can do whatever I want, so that's what I want to do, and I'm going to do it and tell the best stories that I can, so suck it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's go. So, um, uh, John Buscema is great. He's great for a, a lot of different reasons, but uh, of course there's a fucking helicopter going over my office right when I start this video every fucking time. Fuck you! <laughs> Just kidding. All right, let's do this. You can see I'm psyched that I'm, I'm not on a deadline. Whoa, I'm even getting the cats fired up. They're, <laughs> they're fighting now. My passion enrages them. Uh, okay, so uh, what's great about John Buscema's work is... Um, it's very, very iconic Marvel artwork. Um, it, it really is sort of the foundation uh, in the way that blues um, <laughs> is the foundation of rock and roll. Um, you've got Jack Kirby, John Buscema, John Romita Sr. I mean, there's this there's this core group of artists, um, American artists that influenced American comics that, that, that kind of were all sort of children of. It's a really, really fascinating thing. But, but um, you know, and these guys were influenced by their, their own things but but in terms of i i still well you know things have changed a lot now i don't i don't want to generalize and say that like um if you grab like 10 really really contemporary comics you're going to still see Buscema in it because I, I definitely think that over the last like 15 years um a lot of other influences have come into comics but but um Buscema is is really important and uh so we're going to look at his storytelling his draftsmanship and uh you know uh, According to the credits on this, he penciled and inked this himself, so um, that's that's an interesting thing, too. So we're going to look at the cover here first. Okay, so we've got, i um, pretty sure this is Grey Hulk um, and uh, Wolverine looking quite dapper. Um, and uh, so the, the first thing that I see is is um, really, really nice folds. Um, these these pleats and the pants right here are really, really nicely done. Th this, this in particular is really nice, and this is quite nice, too. Um, he's suggesting sort of the form of it hitting the shoe and then um, going back into space. Um, this is is nice, but this this right here is really, really well done. And th these up here are quite nice, too. This is really good on Wolverine. Um, nice, really, really kick-ass face. Nice, simple hand, but, but still quite nicely drawn. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the look on Hulk's face kind of says it all. It's really, really nicely done. This is, this is actually a nice, uh, fold too. I've been giving, um, lessons on Patreon and so I've been breaking down different things. And so, uh, I'm helping, uh, someone with, uh, clothes and capes and stuff like that right now. So it's on my mind. I reviewed, a, uh, another, uh, artist's work just recently, yesterday, in fact, it was great penciler. Um, really, really good. Uh, all right. So, um. 
beautiful, beautiful shot of the Hulk here. I mean, there's there's all kinds of good things going on. But the first thing that I'll say is is look at the torso here, and then look where he places the Hulk's head. A lot of times when when people try to draw things, the tendency, the desire is is you draw the torso and you want to put the head up above. Like it's just it's like a compelling thing to do. But look how it sunk down into the chest, and you don't even see his neck or collarbone. It's a really important. Um, distinction to make um again really really nice hands they're super simple but it's at a it's at a really nice angle i mean you're getting the side plane a little bit of the top there's a subtlety to that hand that's really really quite nice this is fantastic too um really really nice hand the thumbs look look nice got a little bit of the, the palm sort of showing here um it's really really cool simple anatomy but but there's enough here the elbow looks cool this is all nice. It's all cr kind of crunched in here. Um, and then real powerful legs supporting the figure. This one's going back into space a little bit. So if there was um, a, like a perspective, it's like this foot is coming out and this one is, is back in space. So which leg is supporting the weight? Can you tell by looking at it? Is it this one or this one? I'll wait. I want to see in the comments section below if people know. Um, but anyway, it's a really, really nice pose. Um, knees are a little ambiguous. This is nice. It's got, he popped out this, this shape here quite quite well. This all looks good. Nice feet. Simple, but still really, really good. It's just a nice page. Really, really nice splash page. All right, let's do this. Hulk looking in a room. It looks disheveled or maybe abandoned. We know who you are get out of town <laughs> really cool back at the club who's that bub all right let's see what do we got here nice lighting on her dress this is kind of the ford most plain so he hits this with light I mean, that's something that you'll see like a lot of, um, you know, really, really good pencilers do and, and uh, it's a subtle thing but but it's it's a you know it's a legitimate light effect of light on material and it looks good and this guy is getting hit with a little bit of the strobe so he really sets that up nice where you know the light is is uh well it could be coming from a few different spots but but somewhere like that um this is nice little spotlight on him i use this stuff all the time i, I don't know if i necessarily got it from busema but again it's like it's very very difficult sometimes to track your own influences because um, it could be a combination of things that you're reacting to, but I mean, like I talk about this all the time, like these kind of shapes, even uh, like like this and this. I mean, he's all leading you out of the panel. You know, it's like he he frames Wolverine, sends you over here. This leads you here. This leads you here, and it all takes you out. I mean, it's pretty like uh, I've been using the word textbook, but <laughs> textbook just means right. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, but but that's the ultimate goal. Really, really attractive women he draws, and again, it's so simple, um, simple but but very well constructed. Um, man, I feel so much more clear today. It's crazy. Um, the deadline, I'm telling you, the stress of the deadline and all that stuff, it fries your brain. And then I come out of it, and I'm like, I'm human again. But um. Yeah, like even creating sentences is difficult when I'm when I'm so overworked. But um yeah, so so what what makes a face attractive is proportion. And what I mean by proportion is is it's the distance and relationship that all the objects in the face have. And the same goes for figures and it goes for for really anything. But but there's an amount of space that he creates between the eyes. There's an amount of space that he creates between the mouth, the size of the mouth, the distance from the mouth to the chin, the nose, how broad is the nose, where are the cheekbones? This is all a relationship that this has. And if you hit these proportions and you put these objects onto a face with that correct amount of distance between things and the right size relationships, you'll have an attractive face every single time. There's many different ways to do it, but when you get it down, if you maintain that, that's why artists have a level of consistency with their work, is they understand their size relationships, they understand the distance relationships, and 
um, you know, they're able to do it consistently. Do they think about any of this stuff? No, probably not. Once you learn it, it's kind of like, um, it's instinctual. You just know, you can feel it. You can see if it's right. You can feel if it's wrong. And um, one of the really, really interesting side results that I've had from reviewing other people's work is they throw me problems that I don't necessarily have in my own work. And it's not to say that I don't have a lot of uh, things that I need to address in my work, but I have to problem solve someone else's problems. And so I have to really, really look at the work and, 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 and try to break down what's looking weird. Like sometimes I'll, I'll see a figure or a piece, piece of clothing and I have to go, okay, well, like, what did they do wrong? Like, what, are, what is the thought process? It's been really, really interesting and quite a learning experience for me, honestly. Like, uh, um, there's a lot that, that I'm getting out of it too, which, which is, which is cool, but it, it's a lot of work to do. Honestly, it, they're, they're real time consuming. Um, really, really fantastic Wolverine face. And again, on Buscema, that's the one thing that you, you will see is, is he's pretty damn consistent with his, um, just his ar ar archetypes and characters and stuff like that. Like even this guy, I mean, this face right here is just so nice, but I mean, you know, it's a classic Buscema face, but, but it's, it is really interesting how, um, how well he does it. So let's, let's look at the storytelling on this page really quick and see how it goes. It's a lot to juggle. I'm trying to get the autofocus. So, um, so he's got kind of like a V shape here the with the Hulk's face. Then he's got this pulling you up to Wolvie here. Some nice, you know, just like a nice crowd scene. He leaves this open, which I think is nice. I mean, the temptation... I guess theoretically it could be that you would want to maybe plug in a little background there, you know, like floor plane. Maybe there's a uh, some sort of serving table back here, you know, like a little indication of the kitchen. He does it a little bit more here with the plant um, and then plug some people in the background. Still very, very attractive faces. Um, you know, even that little tiny face of the woman is nice. And again, the reason it's nice is it's the size relationships and the distances with things. Every single time. That's how when you get an attractive face, if you can if you can memorize those measurements, it'll always look nice. It'll always look good. You know, if you if the mouth goes too wide, then it's they're gonna look different, and it, sometimes it can have really weird results. And you'll find that you have your own tendencies. Like for me, I know there's a little mental checklist of things that I have to watch. Um. You know, so it's like when I draw a face, I have a, a tendency to do, you know, I draw this thing bigger or this thing too small or that the space uh, between the things is, is um, too short or too long. You, you need to kind of monitor yourself. This is, I always love this panel. He's got a few shots in rooms like this, and they're always really, really cool, even though they're they're pretty simple, but... You know, it, it has a character to it. I mean, really nice Hulk pose. Again, nice hand. It's just so simple, but so nicely done. The wrist looks great. That's a nice shot. Really, really nice. This is cool with the sound effect and, and the art. Again... It's an attractive face, as, as little as he drew there. Just the eye, the eyebrow, and the mouth and the nose. It's, it's like, you can tell she's like, you know, she's hot. <laughs> Classic thugs. Man, they're so big. Again, proportions. Like, like, what... If this guy's head was bigger, he would still feel big, but because of the size of his head and relationship to the body, it really, really gives a sense of, like, man, this guy is huge he's big too but man that guy's really big and again powerful hands powerful arms and this is interesting a lot of these are six panel pages you know it's it's pretty quote unquote stock you know not not really designy like layouts but it still looks really really good I feel bad with the F-bombs now that I'm doing a John Buscema video. Some some nice person is going to be like, oh, cool, a John Buscema video. 
And then it's me cursing at a helicopter. It was all in good fun, though. Don't take it too seriously. Like I said, I just finished a deadline. Cut me a little bit of slack. <laughs> Telling you, I was so beat up like a week ago. I was, I really, really felt like crap. Honestly, I, I, I know everybody likes to sort of like say everything that's going on in their life and <laughs> on social media, but I generally don't. But man, I'm telling you, I was just so, so tired and burned out, overworked, man. Like, why does everything have to be late? I'm over it. That's why, dude, I'm telling you, Blaster Kid and Denizen, I'll work every single day on it. It will never be late. It will never be under the gun because I'm on it. I know how to create a schedule and keep to it. And I know how to work consistently. It's so important. But that's not what I deal with in my day life, my day job. And it's a combination of things, too. It's not, it, it, you can never really, like, there's not one simple explanation for it. I just, uh, the big, the biggest target is just comics. <laughs> That's who I blame. I like that staircase. It's simple, but it's good. I like the little black underneath those stairs is really good. Yeah, this guy's so talented, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Really cool. So we're just gonna do this one issue. I can always come back to Busemba. I'm, I'm actually this is. Uh, nice. Oh, man, it's great. His, like, guys getting thrown in the air poses are always really, really cool. In fact, like, like whenever I have to do stuff like that, I definitely am always thinking of uh, either him or Kirby. And my memory of it is always kind of different than how they do it. So it's kind of a, it's a good and a bad thing. Because I never do it, well, at least I don't feel like, I never do it as good as them. But but uh, then when I, when I go and look at, how they did it it's never exactly how i pictured in my mind anyway so someday the two will meet and and i'll have my own sort of i guess unique way of doing it but like these kind of poses it's just crazy how they they do it again and again and again and, and um i wish in a way that i knew um more about sort of the the relationship that say someone like Kirby and Buscema had at the time, like were they pals? Like did they ever talk or communicate? Um, you know, did they even work in the same space? Like, I don't know, like if either guy ever worked in like the Marvel bullpen or whatever and uh, were around each other, or maybe, maybe they didn't even know each other and just maybe had met at a convention or something. I don't, I don't know. I've never, heard or read anything of Busema mentioning Kirby and vice versa. So I don't know. I could be wrong on that. Maybe in the, that Stan Lee, John Busema video, he mentions Kirby, but I, I don't remember it, but all right, have a great day. And, uh, we'll come back to this at some point and look at more Busema, but I really, I just wanted to do an update video and let everyone know for sure. Follow me on Instagram and check out that Denizen art. I've got another, um, uh, I really, in three pieces, I figured out the style. It was kind of interesting. The third one, I went, okay, I know exactly what I want to do with this thing now. Um, but it, it definitely upped the um, the level of, uh, not, I don't know if I'd call it detail, but um, I decided kind of at that point that I might not work under the restrictions of the square panel Instagram size thing. Because um, initially, I was going to try to do the whole story where it would, would sit nicely on Instagram. But the story's too good to restricted by something as arbitrary as Instagram is mainly a square um, format. So I'm going to work on, um, I'm going to lay out, I think five or six of the next pieces. Pa like they're kind of like, I'm sort of showing it panel to panel, but I may actually start doing page to page. I'm trying to decide the, the speed that I'm going to dole it out. But anyway, have a great day. And uh, this was the Marvel comics, essential Wolverine, um, Issues 1 through 23. All right, have a great day. Bye.